So, someone's obsessed with you. First of all, well done. No, I'm joking. Obviously, it's a, quite a serious situation or can be. And yeah, it's it's something I think is useful to look at from less of a personal perspective, meaning try not to overanalyze why you got where you are. What should you do if someone's obsessed with you? There's a lot of reasons people get obsessed with others. It's kind of a normal thing. Everyone's experienced it to some degree in their lives. They get very fixated on someone as their person of interest, like they want a relationship or sex or both, or they just want to be around them a lot. So you'll know from this channel that I do deal with limerence uh, as a counsellor, but I'd say what we will discuss here is for limerence or people experiencing limerence, but also people on the other end, people who are receiving attention for someone who is limerent and also just generally someone who has unwanted attention from someone. The first thing to appreciate is that when someone feels that strongly about you, often it is because they have some incomplete picture and they're really blowing up the meaning of who you are and how much you will mean in their life or could mean in their life. And this can become quite extreme where they actually begin to believe that there's nothing else that would be worthy of uh, filling their life or of being part of their future. We're taking at it from a slightly different angle this time. Hopefully it will be helpful to you if you're receiving this kind of attention. If you're clear on what your intentions are moving forward, meaning you don't want them in your life in that way, or you want them in your life as friends, but nothing else, those are the kinds of things you want to focus on rather than what did I do? Is it my fault? Did I lead them on, etc.? Which are things, of course, worth considering at some level. But if you're trying to help them not suffer in the process of being obsessed with you, then you really will want to focus on what's a productive way forwards and what are your boundaries here? What are you willing to engage in going forwards? So if you're not willing to have them in your life in any way, then of course the clearest thing to do is to have no contact, to not engage, to not respond, etc. And usually if, again, if your decision is not to have them in your life to much or at all, it's better to just have zero. Even a little bit is likely to create some motivation for them to keep coming back and that is going to lead to a cycle of painful reigniting of their feelings feeling like oh maybe I'll just try this maybe they were waiting for that etc and that's not helpful now if you need to engage in them in some way it's best to really just stick to what you need to meaning only engaging in those things that you know are not going to lead them on now if you're in a school setting and you're a classmates and you're not able to separate in that way then of course just keeping it cordial be nice nice in again being too nice is of course going to be a problem but be nice in the sense that you don't need to like be mean to them you don't need to be aggressively rejective of them but it is good to be very clear and consistent clear and consistent at the level that is appropriate and that's it so they will really be looking to you for more interesting kind of leads to go on, even if it doesn't mean that they can act on it. So what I mean is they'll want to learn more about your life and that might seem harmless that you're just telling them about what's going on, but that is really going to feed their fantasy as to how important you are, what you mean to them and potentially how your life together would look like because it just creates a, a more vivid picture. And I think actually creating this analogy of a picture is going to be useful to you in that they are looking at this picture and they're projecting themselves onto it and they're also projecting what they need onto you. So when you think of a picture that's going to be interesting, it's going to have lots of detail, it's going to have lots of colour and it's going to be easy to see and interesting, have lots of different dimensions, etc. And these are the things that are going to also attract someone to you or to the idea of you. So you can see how using that as a template will mean that you can start to remove color, remove dimension, remove their ability to see this picture because they're going to keep looking in, keep looking for a little bit more, a little bit more. So what you're going to want to do is almost be as boring as possible. Now, being boring doesn't necessarily mean being disengaged from them in a like, hmm, yeah, okay, like, like you're not interested in speaking with them, though you shouldn't particularly show interest it's pleasantries you know if you were going to be nice to a stranger you would probably just be polite of course respond 
But if they go too deep with a question, you're probably not going to go there. And you might say, yeah, not really comfortable sharing that. Or I don't really want to talk about that right now. You know, so so you can be yourself and be kind and be present, you know, when they're there, when you do need to interact with them. But try not to overcolor yourself is what I'd say. If you're in the more complicated area of needing to engage with them, this is where it's going to get tricky. So you might have them in as part of your extended group of friends. You might work with them, go to school with them. They might, I don't know, be connected with your family in some way. And then you're really going to find it hard to disentangle them completely or to go no contact, meaning, you know, not engaging. Uh, but there's a few things you can do. So we all know that in this digital age, people are using the internet to find information about people. So if you do use social media, then keep everything private. That There can be ways to kind of limit the amount that they specifically see, just so then they're not, for example, checking your stories on Instagram just to see like what you're doing. That kind of thing will feed into their fantasy a lot more. But you could also go the other way in that if you are, if you appear to block them, they'll see this as a rejection and maybe you're not willing to do that. If you are willing to do that, meaning give them that unambiguous message of no, which it is fine and, and can be a productive way forward if that's actually what you want. Um, but if it's not, meaning you don't want to upset them because they're going to be close to you in some way or another, you might want to do that quite carefully. Those things online are going to be the colors in the picture that they paint of you in their own mind. So you're going to want to try not to feed that. And also, if they see you with other people, that's going to be quite difficult because you're going to interact with others, maybe in a more friendly way, maybe in a more positive way, or you might even have an interest in someone else and therefore you show them interest. And that might really upset this person. So in that case, avoiding as much as you can is great, at least to the degree that you can. This person may be going out of their way to see you in these situations and they're going to get hurt and that's that's on them. There's only a certain amount of control you have in this situation. It's good and kind that you're considering their feelings by coming here to try and mitigate the damage that it will do to them. But there is a limit, of course, to what is practical for you. And so I'd say in the last example where you're actually quite close, meaning they're going to be in your life a lot, you might want to take a clearer stance. So rejection is is painful always. We're, we're wired to find rejection painful because it means that the tribe or someone important is rejecting us and that's bad for us in terms of evolution. So it is designed to hurt us. Rejection is designed to hurt us. So remember that. If you're going to reject someone, try and do it in the kindest way you can. Now don't confuse kind with unclear or not decisive. So someone saying, I just don't feel that way about you might be interpreted in a number of ways, or I just don't feel like that at the moment might be even vaguer. And that's just going to lead to them maybe feeling rejected for a short period of time, but then saying, oh, but maybe they've changed their mind now. So framing it in a positive is good. Reiterating what's nice about them or what you enjoy about them in a light way, lighthearted way, is good because hopefully it will salvage some self-esteem, but you do have to be clear, look, I don't think I will ever have feelings for you like that. That's just, you know, the way the way it is. Thank you, and I'm sorry this is hurtful because I know it is, but I think it's best if we are both on the same page so we can move on and kind of get on with a more uh, realistic way of thinking about our friendship or whatever it is. So... I'm trying not to give too many specific instructions, meaning say this or that, because you need to craft this particularly to your situation. So be mindful of their personality. If they are sensitive, it's going to be harder for them to deal with this. And so perhaps you'd want to do it without others seeing, for example. You wouldn't want to reject them in person, in public, in front of people they know, of course. You may want to do it by text. Some people find that off-putting too because you didn't want to do it in person but the thing is with texts is that you can revisit them and reread them again so if you craft it well enough they can go back to that text and be like you know what she was very clear this is not going to happen I'm not going to follow up on that particular point um, if they ask again keep it shorter don't indulge this over and over again like rewrite the message in a way that they can start getting more interesting information because then this becomes a, an extenuation of this story right so I guess that's another thing. It's not just the you, the painting, but it's also the painting of 
our interaction together, our journey of becoming a couple or getting together, whatever it is, which is everything that's in their head. So you don't want to add any more detail to that than is strictly necessary. Hope this was helpful. I'm sure there's many angles that we could come at for this topic. Uh, just let me know in the comments below if this has been useful and if there are any other points that you think I should cover and I'll try and get to those soon. Cool. Look after yourself.